The next part of the video is putting the speaker together. First thing you got to do is build the frame and by that I mean the left, right, top and bottom. And what we do is we just use our clamps, a lot of clamps. We glue it all together, we let it dry. And then what's left when it's all done is this. As you can see here, nature is not consistent. And I try to match as many of the pieces as I possibly can, but sometimes you just can't. And I'm gonna experiment with some wood dyes to see if I can at least get the shading to be consistent. I've never done that before, so who knows what that's gonna look like. But you can see here, this side's a little bit better than the other. Regardless, once I get sanded and put some oil on there, it will make it a little bit uh, nicer, a little more consistent anyway. And all right, let's glue up the back panel. All right, so it's time to put the back panel on. I've cut this to size, so it's ready to go on. And I put the front panel on. I don't glue this right now. I haven't even sized it yet. I just put it there so it protects the edges of the front part of the speaker. And so the clamps will really dig in. If I wasn't to put this on there, the clamps would dig in here and it would uh, make it uneven and you wouldn't get a good seal when I finally do put the front panel on. So let's get glue applied and then let's clamp this thing down. I'll show you, there's gonna be a lot of clamps making sure that we get every gap squeezed out. When I clamp, I'll start at the bottom and I'll work my way up. I'll put some clamps in the middle, which I'll show you in a second. But as I squeeze, you can see that the glue starts to ooze out and up at the top, it pushes away. So the next set of clamps I'll put here and then I'll finally finish up up there and we'll get it all nice and tight. All right, this is the last set of clamps up here. I'll tighten and you can see all the glue squeezing out. So we got a really tight fit. I'll probably go around and put a couple more in between top and bottom there and get it to make sure it's as tight as possible. All right, a lot of clamps to make this happen. We're gonna do the exact same process with the front once I get that sized, but uh, we'll do this in phases because I need to cut holes and the front, I need to uh, make sure that I got all the driver holes cut and the vent tubes and in the back in the back of one of these is going to go the amplifier plate and on the other one it will be the terminal cups and when you're done this is what it looks like this is one i did previously the one i just did is over there drying and uh, you can see the glue that has dried and what I will end up doing is sanding this all out. I'll, I'll scrape this off and then sand it out and round over the edges and it will look actually really nice. The 2500 has a crossover circuit like this. It's built into the terminal cup, but on this one, there is nowhere uh, to put it because we're going to have the amplifier plate. So what I've done is I've drilled some holes in there and we're going to mount it like that and we'll have to make the connection uh, to the crossover circuit and uh, bring those wires up that we can connect up to the amplifier plate. And so one of the crossovers will be buried inside and the other one will just be cut into the back and you'll just plug it in like you would a normal 2500. So I soldered leads onto the positive and negative terminal rather than connecting it there. We just soldered it there. And then we will connect the pieces, the, uh, the leads to the amplifier plate. Now we just gotta screw this thing down and we'll be good to go. I've installed the crossover circuit into the cabinet. It's screwed down. This is the woofer leads. This is the lead for the tweeter. I had to extend the length because the, this cabinet is taller and deeper than the original. So we just made some connections right there. And this is the lead that will be connected to the amplifier plate. So we're all good to go. I'll have to put some dampening material inside to get rid of any resonance from the drivers themselves. So we'll move on to the next phase, which is 
measuring up and installing the front panel and cutting the holes for that. Now that I've got the backs on both speakers, it's time to cut out the terminal cup holes. And in this case, we're not gonna have a hole. What we're gonna have is a, a place to mount the plate amplifier. It's an Audio Engine 2 Plus, And this has the Bluetooth that I talked about in the previous video. So we just have to cut it out wide enough to give it a lip for these, uh, for this to mount on. So I've already marked it out here. I'm just gonna get a jigsaw and cut that out. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight because this will overlap and cover up any uh, imperfections. And as I said over here, we will just cut a hole for the terminal cup. So we'll get that going and then I'll put masking tape in there because we'll have to sand this all down. And then I gotta get the fronts cut and uh, glued on as well. So we are getting close to the end. Okay, the hole is cut, and as you can see, it's not perfect, but it doesn't matter because we'll get this put in there. And it looks really nice. Let's go cut some more holes. Before I cut the holes, I like to draw it out with a compass to make sure everything's gonna fit, and it looks like it's going to. So you come over here, and I've already started. And use my DeWalt router with this jig. It has all the dimensions. You just put in a a little dowel. It's made out of steel in the appropriate dimension for diameter. And then you drill a one eighth inch hole. And then you just go around and you cut it out. So this is what it looks like, partially there. I'm very patient when I do this because in the past I have gone quick and let the router get away from me and ruin a hole. And this one was so hard to make. Uh, there's no way I want to ruin this one. So just a few seconds ago, I told you that I needed to be careful. Well, I screwed it up. This is the panel that I messed up. And what happened was that these two holes are very similar. And you can see on this one, I put top. I was not very careful when I made this last one and I had them reversed. And here I tried to fix it by expanding the hole because this is where the, the tweeter was gonna go and the tweeter is not circular. It, it has a rectangular part. I was thinking I could cut it and then put it on the other side. But the problem is this is not in the middle. So no matter what happens, if you flip it around, it's just not gonna work. So I ended up having to make another one. Uh, about a week has gone by since I made that last thing that you saw a few seconds ago. But uh, that's because as um, I've gotten a job again, I don't have as much time to be in the wood shop. And so here is one, I'll take it over here and show you that I've got all glued up. There's a front panel. I've got the masking tape in there. So when I sand it all down, none of the sand will get inside there. The, the grit and the sawdust will get inside there. And inside this one is the, the uh, crossover circuit because on the back of this, let's see, I'll just move it. On the back of that is gonna be the amplifier plate. And there's no place for the terminal cup on this one because the amplifier plate is in itself the terminal cup. So I'll sand this all down, get it all nice and square and uh, sanded. And then I'll round over the edges with my router and then do the final sanding and oiling and then load up all the components. So it's been a long journey. I think it's gonna sound great when it's done, but yeah, be careful. And now my new instructions are, I'm gonna write top. I don't need to put bottom, it's only top and bottom. And then I'm gonna put the size of the cutouts. I'm just gonna write it right there on the, on the wood itself so that I don't make that mistake again. After it came out of the clamps, I sanded all this flush. I scraped it first, so you can it's hard to see where the back panel starts and the side panel ends. I'll come around. So it looks really like it's just continuous. The issues on the top, you can tell, but uh, you know, that's the way it is. Again, as I said earlier, I don't have all the tools that I need, so I make do. Now what I'm gonna do is take the router and we're just gonna go around the edge and round this over. And then we'll sand it again and I'll take it all the way up to a thousand grit 
and we'll uh, show you there. I've already done one of them, so let me show you this guy. So I did this one yesterday. And I'll tell you, the camera does not do it justice. The color is just beautiful. That's what the top looks like. And then um, front panel. So it looks really cool. All right, we'll get these things making music here in no time. Before we get to the audio of the speakers, I wanted to talk a little bit about the finishing. And what I do is I will sand this all the way up to a thousand grit, which is overkill if you're using polyurethane. But I'm not. What I do is I use Danish oil. And I find Danish oil works really well. It penetrates the wood and gives it this nice warm glow. And oil-based polyurethane will do the same thing. But the Danish oil dries quicker and you can handle it sooner. I usually do two coats. I'll let it dry in between and then I'll give it a couple of days to dry and then I'll put a coat of furniture paste wax on there. And the reason I do that is because instead of polyurethane is because these speakers will sit on a shelf and they don't get handled that much, like say a table or something along those lines where you'd be putting things on it. You don't have to protect them as much. Also, with polyurethane, typically the way to do it right is you put a coat on, you let it dry, you'll sand it with very fine sandpaper, then you'll do another coat. You might do that two or three times to build up the layers, and it will be a really nice finish. I find the Danish oil easier to apply and deal with, and for speakers, I think it works just fine. And you can see how nice this looks and uh, the glow coming off of this is incredible. It looks better in person. I think I've said that a couple of times now. So that is the finishing process. It takes a couple days to be fully done, but well worth the time. All right, time to listen to these speakers as best we can through the equipment that I have and the equipment you have. But I renamed the Bluetooth amplifier plate as JBL Bourbon Barrel. I don't know if you can see that very well, so we're gonna connect to it. And then we'll switch over here and we'll listen to some, what is this, uh, music that is royalty free. <laughs> I have one other track with a different sound, so we can uh, take a listen to this one as well. So I hope that came through, but the bass coming out of these things are pretty incredible. I had the originals. I listened to them before I even started any of these 2,500 projects. Uh, there's a whole stack of them there. My daughters have claimed the top one and the bottom one. They've each claimed it. And the one in the middle is one where I had to replace the tweeter with one from Parts Express. There's a whole video on how I got that to sound good because it was a little bit too bright. 
Anyway, these sound better than any of the previous versions I've done. It's taller, it's deeper, so I get a much better bass out of these. And I am going to put in the description a private video that you'll have access to that I'm going to play some music that is a little bit more recognizable and uh, it'll be non-monetized. But uh, that way, if you're interested, you can go to that video link and watch and listen to, I'll, I'll put three different tracks of three uh, more popular types of songs. And I want to thank you for watching and coming along on this journey. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you have any comments or feedback, send it to aura at htguys.com. And you can check out our podcast at htguys.com. It's where my partner and I, Braden Russell, we do a show once a week on home theater, home automation, home technology. And if you get a chance, check it out. Thank you for watching. Oh, <laughs>